So in order to get to the parceling point, let's figure out how to actually get rid of something we've already drawn. So I'm going to select, um, I'm going to go ahead and select our site, site A, click on it. And once again, we have this little screen redraw problem. And I'm going to hit the garbage can here and delete that site. And I don't know if it, I'm, hold on. There we go. I've deleted the site now. And now I want to go back and um, use the parcel tool. That'll turn on the parcels. I'll turn the topography off. Just because it's a little bit busy. And you'll notice that wherever we roll over here, we can actually add site. So I'm going to click on that one. It's going to ask to define that right away. Um, we'll go ahead and just pick any kind of parceling. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the other site. And that gives us a continuous one. And I think I have to click on this again in order to turn it off. All right. So once again, we've combined uh, the two parcels and now it's fully populated. And uh, once again, uh, let's take a look at this in 3D. And we have our development. Now at any point you want to change that, um, um, we have a, a, the full assortment of, and this is actually erroring out probably because it uh, exceeds um, a, um, a zoning requirement. So, um, so that's how we do parceling. And now the, the next thing about parceling is, is we, we own this site, this total site, but let's say we don't want to use it all for the same kind of housing type or use. We have a tool here and let me figure out how to get it activated. I think I'm maybe have, oh, there it is. I have to select the site again. And I have a knife kind of eye, uh, tool here that I can actually cut through the site. And we'll just go from this corner of the parcel, let's say, and go straight across here. And um, touch that boundary line. And now we have two separate parcels. Now let's go ahead and do another one. Let's make another parcel here uh, while we can. Once again, you have to select the site. Um, that tool highlights. And we'll go ahead and we'll pull another another parcel up this way until I touch that boundary line. And now we have three sites um, available to us and you'll notice how um, we can open and close any of those. So um, let's go ahead and let's say we're going to put an office building here on this site. So I've selected site A and um, we're going to put a, let's see, let's just play around here. We'll put a core, um, a spec office just to see what it looks like. How about a tower? And we're on the first floor, so it's a little unremarkable looking, but we'll go ahead and we'll flip that to 3D so you can see what it is. A huge ugly mass. Let's say we just don't want that to happen under no circumstances. So I'm going to go to um, maybe something a little more temperate. And it's sitting on the site a little bit funny here. So I'm trying to figure out there is a place where if we go to the building, we can actually get a little bit of control on how we um, locate that on the site. So this might be a way um, to deal with the way we want to uh, organize this so we could have this large amount of green space towards where our other kind of housing is located. Let's say over here, we decided we wanted to put a supermarket. So I'm going to select that site um, or try to. Let's see if I highlight that and select one of these. We'll put a grocery store there. And I always pick the wrong one. I'm going to see if I can undo that. I want to select that site. And go to mass base and put a grocery store. And then we'll look at this at 2D. And... Um, Let's say I don't like the shape of the grocery store. Maybe I want it to fill in over here somehow. So I can actually just physically move it. And I'm just suggesting to kind of showing you the starting flexibility here. Um, we can go ahead and draw an outline of what we want our shape. Um, we want to free shape it. So we're going to go uh, free shape and we're going to draw an outline. And then I'm just going to come in here and um, well, I don't know what happened to our draw outline here. Draw path offset. Let's see if that works. 
it seems to want to snap the things. But I'm just going to quickly see if we can... That's not going to be right. Let's try to draw an outline. And there we go. We have now a um, an old crazier little shape to our outline. And this is still meeting with the parcels. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this. You know, that's the actual parcel that's under there. If I turn on the show parcels, let's see if that'll show up. Hmm. So here's an error, which is kind of interesting, right? The, it it doesn't uh, it isn't able to identify these kind of curvilinear shapes. So this is where we might want to come in and actually make a little bit of a modification to this. Let's see if we can do that. I guess we can. I don't know if we can add another point, but that would be interesting to kind of explore. Now the parking looks like it's way too huge here. Um, this is an on-campus thing. So let's see what we can do about uh, maybe. Um, uh, dealing with the parking. So let's go to uh, parking, it's fill, and let's go to free shape, and uh, let's draw an outline, and let's say we're going to draw a parking lot over here, and that gets us a parking lot started, and then we could go in and make adjustments to it, um, to its actual configuration. So anyway, you get the idea of really the kind of immense um, of flexibility we have here with, and I don't know why we're creating that void space here, um, but that's actually just an interesting, um, let's see, we've got a free parking shape, and we must have for some reason some kind of void area identified there, and I'm not exactly sure um, what's going on there. Um, so there we go, now it seemed to close up on itself. Um, and that might have to do with some kind of requirements uh, for maximum or minimum amounts of size. So really a fun and powerful tool. Um, once again, we go to a 3D view here. And this doesn't even include, um, I guess, kind of some of the other um, exciting ideas about what this is for a developer, because all of these developments have tabulation to the number of parcels. Um, so if we look at things like land cost, it's assuming land costs, construction costs, and returns on investment. Um, we can create various schemes. We can actually do energy modeling, and we can do uh, rendering with it. We can launch that into Enscape. We can also import this into, um, into Revit. So one of the other things before we start to look at maybe that idea of importing it into Revit um, and this um, Obviously, one of the things really bothering me here right now is this. Uh, let's see, we have some highlighted. We can actually change the stories of this, but I don't like that. But I, I do find that um, I don't like that it's only an um, 11 foot tall building. So I'm going to go to one story again, and I'm going to just change our, our building and say, let's make it um, at least 30 feet tall so we get a better concept of a. Of, you know the proper kind of scale um, between the, the mass of the building and that. So I'd like to change this layout here. I'm going to figure out how to do that in a clever way. I'm going to put it on pause a minute so you don't have to watch me fumble with it. So it took me a little bit of um, shopping around here to find um, this location. But if we go to... Um, we change the zoning to... Let me see again. Hold on. I want to go to townhomes and I go to housing. Let me make sure that is. So I want to go to townhomes. And excuse me because that's going to redraw. And then I go to housing. And my screen is getting really um, finicky here. Once I've selected, um, it has these edit units and dynamic. And if I click on dynamic, I can actually go to a brownstone. And it's um, uh, just a different kind of configuration here. Let's look at it in a 2D view. And I don't know if it has any kind of contents to it. But uh, what's cool is now we can go and edit these units. So here we have just two different kinds of configurations. One looks like it's flipped from the other. And if I click on these, these are editable. 
So if I, let's say, wanted to, um, just in our model, um, create our depth of our entry condition, and uh, we didn't like, let's say, the width of the garage, um, and I don't think we're going to get any choice on that. Let's see what we actually can change here. Let's say we want this to um, jut out further. All right, we can make that edit. We go back to database. Now we have a modified one. And this one, actually, we could go in now and click on it and edit. And just to see if we can make a, a kind of a visual difference between these. And then I'll just pull this entry condition in. And it will go back to the database and then back to the site. And then um, we have the mix of the two different types of stalls or two different types of layout here. And then we can look at those in 3D and we can build up a mix of that. And one of the reasons to do that is that by adjusting those kind of footprints, um, we change the um, amount of, um, of you know, square footage of the building. And that changes the kind of um, tabulations for the economy of building it um, from a developer or an investor standpoint. So um, a lot of neat features here, um, uh, tons of them to experiment with. I really just wanted this to be a kind of an introduction to this. What we'll, um, I guess what I'd like to uh, kind of end this with, this part of this section of it, we're going to do, we're going to now look at the plugins for this and exporting this into Revit. Um, but um, I would like you to do some kind of a development scheme, kind of play around with these abilities to change features, maybe change the unit development, uh, maybe pick a different kind of office park or change its layout. Um, whatever you might find um, interesting uh, according to, um, I guess, things that you're interested in um, as far as might relate to thesis or other projects you're doing. So the next thing we'll look at is actually bringing this kind of information into Revit where we could start to look at uh, building um, visual models for this.